Here we have a site that lists a few movies. If we wanted to open up an API on this site for other applications to use, how would we do that in Phoenix? If you want to follow along from this point, in the episode notes below, I've included a link to a repo that you can clone and use. So let's get started. We'll start by defining the routes we want. Let's open our router, then we'll create a scope for our API. We'll use the API pipeline that's created by default with any new Phoenix app. Now if you're creating an API, it's a good practice to version it. So let's do that here. We'll start with version 1, and we'll use a movie resource for our API. Our API will be read-only, so let's limit it to only have the show and index actions. Now let's take a look at our routes by running mix phoenix routes from the command line. While our routes have different endpoints, you can see they're all named the same, movie path. Let's update the name of our API routes to help them stand out. Let's add as API v1, and if we go back to the terminal and run mix phoenix routes again, we can see that the name of our new API routes have been changed. Let's make one small change. We'll remove API from our v1 scope and move it to the API scope. This will make our naming a little more focused. Now we can create our corresponding controller and view for our API. Let's start by creating an empty movie controller in controllers slash API slash v1. Then we'll create our empty movie view in views slash API slash v1. Back in our API movie controller, let's start by defining the index action. We'll query for all of the movies in our database. Then we'll call the render function. And since this is our API controller, we'll use index.json as the name to pattern match against in our corresponding view. Then let's define the show action. This time we'll pattern match to get the ID from the params map and use that to find the corresponding movie from the database. Then we'll render show.json, which we'll set up in the corresponding view along with index.json. Let's do that now. We'll go to the empty movie view for our API. I've completed this module off screen, but let's walk through it. Let's start off by looking at our render movie.json. This function is responsible for determining what fields from our movies we want to expose in our API. Here we can see it's returning a map with the ID, title, summary, and year attributes. Our other two functions are the corresponding render functions that are called from the movie controller we just set up. First is our render function for index.json. It pattern matches on movies. Then we're returning a map that has a key of data with the value of the render many function. The render many function will return a list of our movies with the attributes defined in the render movie.json function. Our next function is render show.json, which pattern matches on our singular movie. Again, we return a map that has a data key and returns the value of render1. Render1 will return a single map, again with our attributes defined in render movie.json. With our view done, let's restart our server. And if we go to our API's index action, we can see all of our movies listed. Now let's check out our API's show action. And great, we see the correct movie. This looks good, but let's make a few updates to our API. We'll start by removing the leading data key from both index.json and show.json. Now let's update the attributes we want to expose. In the render movie.json function, let's remove the ID and the summary. Hitting the endpoint again, you can see we're only returning the attributes we specified, and there's no data name in our JSON. Many APIs, like those built with Ruby on Rails, support the trailing.json on the URL. But if we append that here, we get an error. Luckily, there's a handy plug we can use to support this. Let's open our mix file and include trailing format plug in the dependencies. Then in our endpoint, we can include the trailing format plug.
Now we can fetch our dependencies and restart the server. And if we go back to our browser, we can see that our API is working again. I hope you enjoyed this episode and happy coding.